I think, um, I think one of the most important things, of course, I'm a spiritual guy. I think that's a big component, but I never, never, never push my Christianity on people. Because like you, I respect every faith. You know, I respect what everybody believes. If somebody asks me if my personal testimony, I'm gonna be the first one to share it. But I do believe spirituality is a big component. Component. What I do also believe is in balance. I think we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, a lot of people will, when they think of success, they think of success in terms of how much money can I make, own my own business, right house, right wife, right car, I'm gonna be happy. Okay, right parties, right people, whatever it is, I'm gonna be happy. And so they're always searching externally for things to make them happy internally. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. Folks, I got a real treat for you. Darren McBee in the house. What's happening? If you guys are watching the video, you'll know that you might say, this dude looks like familiar. Why is that? Original Gladiator on American Gladiators. That's right, brother. Malibu. Malibu. Dude, Ooh. dude, how long ago was that show? Oh, my gosh. Another lifetime ago, man. Like, what year was it? 89. 89? Yep. What was I? What was I? I remember it. I don't remember it. Like I, I, we watched it every freaking week, dude. And I remember, I think who, who you were, there was these buff ass some bitches running around right. competing with average people. Right. Well, so don't say average people because that's what, see, that's what most people thought back then. But these cats that they were picking and picked were like top end collegiate athlete, athletes, ex pro football players, baseball players, but they weren't freaking superstars. No, no, no. But you know how it is. You okay. guys had costumes and shit. Yeah. See, that's the thing. That's what made us cool. Cause we had the spandex and that was hot back in the nineties. Come on. So you get, you get like tough points just for wearing spandex and, uh, these contenders. Oh, seriously, they were top of the line. These guys were, I mean, imagine this, you're, you're come from podunk, you know, Oklahoma and you see a chance to get on national TV and take down, you're a Dave and you see a Goliath everybody wants to slay Goliath, right? So they're up there on national TV for their friends, for their family and everybody. And it's like, man, if I can kick Malibu's butt, I'm going to be on top of the world, man. So that's kind of what we had to face. You know, we had guys that are coming out for blood with us and we're just like, man, I want a paycheck and get out of here. You know? So it was pretty wild. So you guys were just actors. Yeah. I mean, well, in a sense, uh, my character, there was a lot of acting in it. Cause I've been an actor for, you know, 20, 20 something years. But, um, I, I think, most of these guys were like, ex, as far as I'm concerned, every, I know every one of these guys were ex-pro football players. And how, some of the girls were athletes as well, of course. How much money did it pay you per episode? Oh my gosh, you don't even want to know. Chump it, change or It lot? was chump. It was chump. You know, but remember back in 1989, most of us had never done anything in our lives. So if these people would have come by from Samuel Golden and said, listen, would you do this for free just to get national TV time and be in a show? Hell yeah, we would have done it. You well, know, that's what I was going to go next. Did it cause you to get all of you guys to get wildly famous or just kind of famous it, in that during that time? We were like at like superstar status because it was the number one cable show. National TV was it was around the world on the biggest phenomena that would, were would going you on. Get, would you get slammed by people everywhere you went? Malibu. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I would get I would get like marriage proposals from around the world by people that never met me because I played this surfer guy, right? And um, it, the fact of the matter was, I never surfed a day in my life, but I was playing off this persona like this big surfer guy, and uh, and uh, these girls and and guys would be sending me these love affairs. Let me get married to you. I'm going to be with you, and all this stuff. And it, it was crazy. I mean, go to the movie theater and people just mob you at the movie theaters and stuff. It was pretty crazy. It Did was, you like it? Um, you know what? I, I did in the sense that I felt like I could always impart a positive message to the fans whenever they were like, give them something encouraged, say something encouraging to them as much as I could be. So to me, it was always an ability or an opportunity to uh, lift somebody's spirits and, and make them feel positive. And I'll tell you why really quickly, um, just a rabbit trail, just a second. When I was uh, four years old, do you remember the old Adam West Batman TV show that was sure. on? Of course. So I loved Batman and I thought Adam West was the dude. I didn't realize it was a big campy comedy in joke that show. I and mean, I thought he was the man. So anyways, uh, we went to a circus and Adam West was there in costume. And I remember my dad carrying me across the aisles of people just so I could touch Batman. And I got so excited. He said, I broke out on hives everywhere. So I got to touch Batman. And so that always stuck in my mind. And I thought, okay, well here I'm in, I'm in that position. And these kids are looking at me like, I'm Batman. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm their hero. And so it's a big deal to them if I, you know, I say hi or, or encourage them or shake their hands or something. So it was a seed that was implanted in my head way back then and just gave me an opportunity to, you know, raise people up and make them feel good about themselves. Now, how did it all end? 
because I'm sure it was going. You guys were freaking rock stars. Right. And then what? Yeah, it, it was interesting. Well, for me, it was it was kind of up and down. I was there the first season, and um, I got injured really, really badly on one of the events. And uh, I couldn't compete like I really wanted to. Didn't they, didn't they owe you a bunch of money for that, or did you sign oh, your life away? They'd even sit in and say, we're sorry you got hurt. Wow. Nothing. It was just, it was like, let's just pretend Malibu didn't get a concussion. Let's just pretend Malibu didn't have plastic surgery on his forehead. Go back there and keep on getting your butt kicked every single day. And, and at the end of the season, it's like, thank you very much. And uh, I was off after the first season, but um, I kept coming back. I came back on the live tour and did the tour across the United States. And uh, we had a, like a dinner theater show, um, Gladiators Live in Orlando, Florida. So I was there for a while. So I was always on the periphery, if that makes sense. Um, None of these paid big money. Oh, no, 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 no. What the hell were you doing for money? Um, I was doing acting at the time. Um, I was busy doing, I've done 22 national commercials in my life and a couple of internet and international commercials. Uh, I've been on big movies like Batman and Robin, um, Batman Forever, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Annihilation. I played a character called Motaro in that, and that was one of the co-stars. So Walker, Texas Ranger, Married with Children, Curb Your Enthusiasm, I mean, tons of stuff. So Curb Your Enthusiasm, that was a good one. Yeah, you got to check out Thor 14 because that's the episode. It'll it'll make you howl. It's pretty that's funny. the one you're in. Yeah, Thor 14, and I'm I'm at that time, um, I was the first and only actor that made Larry David crack up and break character three times, and uh, you know he's he's pretty much like a very you know stickler about things. He's very kind of anal about stuff. Nice guy, but he's so focused on what he does that nobody breaks the guy. It's almost erotic. Yeah, not yeah, erotic. Yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Neurotic? Neurotic. Yeah, exactly. It's like erotic. That ain't it. No, I knew neurotic. you meant erotic. <laughs> yeah, so, neurotic. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like he's like neurotic a little bit about it. But totally. dude, that's what I love about him. He's uh, fucking funny as but shit. But that's the thing. That's who he really is, though. That's what's hilarious about it. It's just it's just like when I played Malibu, it was, just, it was a larger than life character of myself. That's what Larry David's doing when that character on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And so we just had a ball. You know, we absolutely had a ball together. So, So that's how you made all your money? That's kind of made yeah, most of my money. Also, I was involved in uh, ministry, Christian ministry, most uh, most of my life as well, where I've oh, traveled. So, so nothing major happened, and then you turned to it. You've been doing it since you no, were young. No, just always kind of been symbiotic um, throughout my whole career. Who's your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Now, would it surprise you if I told you that wasn't his name? That wasn't a name? No, that wasn't his name. The, no, Christ is a name meaning Messiah. No, no, no. Jesus, that's not his name. Yes, it was. His name was Yahshua. Oh, of course. Yeshua. Of course. Yeshua. It's actually Yeshua. Is that yeah, the yeah. correct pronunciation? Well, but you're right. Yeah. Right. 100%. Yep. Yep. And anyway, so it's interesting uh, about that. Just sure you knew his name. No, like, thank what you. If, what, if, what if someone said, yeah, I know Malibu. We're best friends. And I said, what's his name? And they couldn't say Joe. You're 100% right. I agree with you. But you know what? In this day and age, if you say Yeshua, they're gonna, nobody's going to know what you're talking about except like people like yourself people or learning really people know. that really know him. That really know him. That's right. Because I always tell people, you know, yep. when people say, Oh yeah, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I go, who? Right. And they're, they're thinking like, well, Jesus. I'm like, right. you, you don't know his name? Right. His name's Jesus. Right. No, it isn't. No, it wasn't. Yep. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, because, well, think about it. I mean, how many people will use throw the word God around? Thank God for this. Thank God. Well, which God are you talking about? You know, especially with Jesus. They thank Jesus at this moment because it feels good to them. But you're right. Who is he? What has he done? Where did he come from? Was there prophecies about him? What was his name? Let's start with that. Thank you. How exactly. do you know somebody if you don't know their name? Exactly. Like if, like if I told you, hey, when you leave here, just go tell everybody Brad hooked you up and, and Brad's the guy that you want to call if you come to Vegas. Right, right, right. And then you go out there and you just like, you know, at some point in time, think, man, they're not going to really understand me when I say Brad. So I want them to understand. So I'm just going to call him um, Bobby. Right. And so now you go tell everybody. The, my name's Bobby. Now, why wouldn't you just say what my name was? Well, they wouldn't understand. So you, so, so you called him Bobby so they'd understand I'm some good dude. Right. Okay. Right. That's called a transliteration, by the way. Okay. Right. So the name was transliterated. Right. According to the, you know, people. Right. When right. in reality, it was changed. His name was changed. And I always ask, who were we to change his name? That's a great point. But I have to, you have to remember that back in those days, they were... They, uh, we, they took. I know, but blah, I just want someone to answer my question. Who are we okay. to change his name? Oh, I agree. Nobody. So why is his name changed? 
Okay, that's what I was going to get into. You're going to say it was it was transliterated. No, no. Well, okay. It's it, yeah. If that's if that's the correct terminology, but things things trans like you said transliterate from Greek to the Aramaic because it was written. The, the Bible was written in Greek, and they spoke a lot of times in Aramaic. So names were changed to. Well, the Bible was written in Aramaic, and then it was translated to Greek. Actually, Greek first. That's bet, not correct. Bet. Okay. I'll bet you. Okay. Can't wait to Google after we get off this okay. show. Okay. Because you're the type of dude that if I if if you learn something you'll you'll start using it and be like wow I didn't even know that yeah a lot of people they'll just deny 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 like when I say do you know Jesus' real name they say it's Jesus right I say it was Yahshua and they say, no it's Jesus I love that so let me ask you a question and they don't know that his name is Yahshua no I ask you a question do you say that just to stump people or do you say it because you're a true Christian born again believer are you doing it to just try and bust out those people that are I say it to, I say it to spur you into doing what the scripture says which Amen. is seek. Amen. It doesn't say listen, doesn't say follow. Mm -hmm. It says seek and ye shall find. And people right. aren't seeking. Yeah. Like when I say his name was Yeshua, some people that know, they'll say, yeah, Yeshua. Well, that's a pronunciation. That's different. Right. They're both the same name. What we're saying Spell is the, the same, same thing. Correct. Correct. So I'm saying Yeshua. You're saying Yeshua. It's just a different pronunciation, but same name. Right. But the Jesus, pronunciation matters I know, because Jesus back in, in was Jewish... not his name. Correct. And, correct. And, and some people will argue it because they've, they've never looked. And if you go look, you'll realize, oh, his name was Yeshua. We, okay, and me, if his name was Yeshua, then why are we calling him something else? Now, my question would be, right. you know, who's who's the judge that someday said, we're going to change his name? And, and what power did that person have, mm -hmm. especially compared to the man who gave us his name, mm -hmm. Yeshua or correct. Yahshua? Correct. He said his name was Yeshua. Why are you changing his name now i guarantee you their answer is going to be so these guys would understand i hear what you're saying okay totally. so you changed his name so they'd understand rather than just say his name like he commanded call right. upon his name give praise to his name amen we don't even know his name anymore right and what's funny is there's a scripture in revelations that says point blank period my ch your children's children will forget my name and we've forgotten the name listen that's back in the old testament time moses said that Moses, when he was when he was taking all those uh, the uh, Israelis, the Hebrew slaves across the Red Sea, he was foretelling, "Do not forsake your God of the Bible." And for the while they were with him, but as soon as he turns his back, they start idol worshiping. They start turning to the Baals and the Asterisks and the Molex. They started getting to the point where these people were sacrificing their children to the gods to Molech. You know what Molech was? He was a god of the the Baals, which is a Canaanite god where they would sacrifice their children. It was a giant bull head with a man's arms. They liked them red hot on fire, and they put their kids on top of that. And the kids would roll down into this, the furnace, burn to death. And that was sacrificial. And the Hebrews were doing that because they got, they married the Moabite women, the Canaanites. And the next thing you know, they're sacrificing against God's own word. Imagine that. So you talk about transliteration between Yahshua. These people were completely denying the God of the Old Testament and doing these things, these horrible witchcraft and divination and sorceries, all these things against what the Bible talked about. And Moses said, don't do it or God is going to turn his back on you. Mm. And if you read the Old Testament, you'll find that the only reason why the Hebrews have ever made it through is because God chose them, period. Not because they were great. you say the Hebrews, uh, Hebrews. The, the Israel, Israelites. Is, this the, is that the Jewish? Yes, the correct. The Yehuda? Yes. Yes, yes, correct. Um, so, yeah, the Jews, the Jewish people, the Jewish nation. But Well, Yahshua was Jewish. Of course, Absolutely. No question about it. Yeah. No question about it. That's why um, I was saying that we we're talking about the importance of these people. Just like you said, they start forgetting very quickly. Dude, we've forgotten. That's all I'm saying. So when you, you say, right. why, why do I do this? I'm just nudging you to go remember and seek. Why? Don't listen to me. Right. Scripture doesn't say listen to somebody. Right. Does it? Right. It says freaking seek and ye shall find. Well, you know, then it, then it also said one time, which got me thinking, you know, um, somebody said something about, um, I think it was, I forget, but it was, uh, my name is the Lord. That's the scripture. Mm. That's the verse. Mm. You know, my name is the Lord. That is my name. And I will share my glory with no, no one. Other. That's right. So no other, whatever. I mean, Correct. various Bibles too say various. No, no, you're absolutely but it's, right. But it's something like that. Absolutely right. So, so when I heard my name is the Lord, I'm like, well, that's not his name. That's the, t that's a title, a right. Lord. So, so what is his name? And so then I would just start to like wonder what was his name? 
Well, there's a movie out that was filmed in original Aramaic that they spoke in the days that he walked the earth. And, and I watched that movie to see what they called him. Mm -hmm. And they called him Yeshua, Yeshua. And, you know, when they call him, you know, Yeshua, Yeshua. So, so, and that was like the language they spoke back then. Correct. Absolutely. So, so if you, if you appeared back in those days and you walked around looking for Jesus, asking everyone, where's Jesus? No one would know who you're talking about. Yeah. True. Great point. You'd have to ask yeah. for Yeshua. Yep. And that, so, so then at some point he became Jesus. In other words, they changed his name. Now, no one can right. explain that to me with any kind of, you know, what I would believe is credibility because it's just your opinion. Right. Somebody's opinion is, well, it doesn't matter. He knows who we're talking about. Well, again, if you say it doesn't matter, cool. But who are you to say it doesn't Correct. matter? The scripture says it matters. It who are you to say it doesn't matter? I love it. Yep. Absolutely. Well, that's just my interpretation. Exactly. That's right. just your interpretation, right. fool. And I'm not supposed to listen to just anyone's interpretation. Yeah. I'm going to listen to the to the words. That's right. Like, just look at the look at what it says that's and right. make yourself an interpretation. Right. My interpretation is, oh, you want us to give praise to your name? Huh? What's your name? Yeshua. Great. Someone else tries to change it. No, no, no. I already know it's not anything else but that. Why? He right. told me what his name was. Right. And by the way. Everyone knows that was his name. Right. Well, no, yeah, 100%. No okay, question. So, so again, right. why everybody calls him Jesus, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why. Well, because at some point they changed his name. And here we are 2,000 years later. We don't know shit from Shinola. Meaning? We're, well, we don't know that. The, the, a lot of people do not know that happened. They believe that his name is Jesus. Gee, correct. Yeah, I agree. And it was Jesus and it was always Jesus. Right. They don't realize his name was not Jesus. Right. And they also say what they used to think, what's well, his last name? The Christ. No, it's not last name. The Christ means Messiah. But people say, well, what was Jesus' last name? Oh, Christ. His last name wasn't Christ. Okay. His last, the Christ means the Messiah. So that's who he was. Jesus, the Messiah. Or Yeshua, the Messiah. Christ is an actual term derived from the Latin Christos. Christos. Which means anointed. Right. It actually means oil or anointed, which is the right. Christ. Right. So, so I mean, at the end the of the day, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of this one, but you ever heard someone say Jesus H. Christ? Yeah, of course. Well, I used to think that was a joke. When in reality, if you look at really what went down... Uh -huh. The name Jesus H. Christ what came from Jesus, which was Yahshua, H, which is Horus, and Christ for the Christos, which mm. is um, back in those days, the Hare Krishnas, the Krishnas, not the Christos, the I Krishnas. Know what about. So Jesus, Horus, Krishna. That's interesting. You know, Horus was an Egyptian god. So I know that, that. So, so and they, he used to get sacrifice babies to him. Do you know when? Of course. On what day? Um, it was sometime in June. I don't know well, which day. It was day. not. Most of the sacrifices. Go we'll Google it no. when we're leaving. No, here. no, I believe you. I'm December not. I'm not 25th. up on that. So. Was that December twenty fifth? December twelfth oh, on the, a pagan a pagan holiday, of course. The December twenty fifth is yeah. not Yahshua's birthday. No, of course but not. Yet, when do we celebrate his birthday? Right. When. December 25th. What? Well, just like what? Easter. Why well, does that make any sense? To, you know what? Though? We just were told to. Just, well, look at Easter. Easter, e Easter was the biggest, one of the huge that's pagan that, holidays. That, that's actually after the god Astora. of Ishtar. It came from that's Ishtar, right. the goddess Ishtar. That's right. Okay. Astora was part of the- And you know, it, and you know what they the, would do during that holiday? Oh, it was a total pagan holiday. It was an orgy. Oh, big time. And they would have a lot of sex, so they yep. would have babies nine months later yep. to sacrifice to Horus. And do you know yep. how many months it is from Easter to Christmas? Nine. Nine. How long does it take to make a baby? <laughs> Nine. Nine. Dude, they had a yep. festival here, and so they'd have babies being born right. and sacrificable. Absolutely. To Horus. Yep. Now, those, now again, I didn't make that. They're going to be, we're going to get a lot of hate on this one. No. I didn't make that up. I just That's looked, and like there's some information out there. I'm not saying that it's right. Let me give everybody full mm -hmm. disclosure. Right. I'm not saying Jesus isn't real. I'm saying he's more real than even a lot of people know. Like, right. But his name wasn't Jesus. Absolutely. I agree. That, that's number one. Number two, he, it says, seek and ye shall find. So I started to look, and this is just some of the things I'm finding. And I'll tell you right now, when you read the Bible, and it says Lord and God. There's some that are capitalized and some that aren't. That's right. And the ones that are capitalized where his name used to be in the scripture. So every time you see the, the word God, okay. And by the way, there's two different names for God and Jesus. So 
God, which by the way, you know his name? Elo- it's several. Elohim, I there's am that one, I am. I know, but there's one name. He had a name just like Yahshua did. Well, yeah. Let's Okay, let's go back to and, Moses. And, and how do you pronounce it? I don't know, but well, it's one second, Yahweh. One second. Let, let me just, let me say one thing, okay? Um, I am that I am is what God said to Moses at the day of the burning birth. So you can say That's that a his hayah, name is by I way. am. Do you know the Hayah? Hayah, no. I am that I am is a Hayah. Oh, I got you. Yes. So so you got to remember that is a name, but also Elohim is a name for God. And it's a plural name, which is so really is interesting. Allah. So, well, one second, I'm going to take you to Elohim really quickly. Elohim was, was a plural. And if you look at the Old Testament, the very beginning, it said, let us go down and make man in our image. Who's he talking about? He's not talking about, you know, Horus. Or, no, he's talking about God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit, the perfect Trinity. Each one is God. All God, okay. All okay, so I have a question Trinity. for you then. If that's, the way, if that's the yeah. truth, yeah. When so Jesus is God, mm-hmm. okay. So if Jesus is God, mm-hmm. that which might make sense. I mean, they're they're very deity like. When he was on the cross, mm-hmm. he looked up and said something. What did he say? He said a couple of things. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Okay, who's he talking to right there? Talking God the Father. Who's he talking to? God the Father. Himself? No, 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 no. He's not talking to himself? No. Here's the well, thing. Well, then how is he God if he's not talking to himself? So let me explain that to you, because that's a great question. He okay. can't be He can't well, be talking well, to himself. Well, let me answer you, okay? Let me answer you, okay? Very. It's, it's called the Trinity, and basically it was, what you're talking is modalism, okay? Modalism means that, let's say, this is God. One second he comes out and is Jesus. And then you want to talk to God the Father, he goes back here and he comes back as God the Father. Then he but they don't know here. each other? They don't but communicate? Let me finish. Let me, let me explain. The Bible is really clear that God the Father is a separate and complete personage than Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a complete and separate personage personage of jesus jesus is a complete separate personage of those two but all are one god all are it's one very very clear okay we made up the name trinity it is not in the bible but bible's not in the bible either if you look it up but basically that's because we e- wrote the bible each and every no we we absolutely that was we that was wrote the bible based on the scripture based on what god said okay yeah, but that's the scripture if, we if wrote read, the bible human beings wrote the bible. right as they're carried along by the holy spirit that's what the bible says okay well so, that's what the scripture says there was no bible back then true true it was a lot of oral it, it came was all orally. scripture came down orally that's right a lot of the whole old time was all orally tr- oral traditions oral speaking 100 percent right but the bottom line is getting back to the trinity it's absolutely clear clear if you're going to follow biblical christianity that they are three distinct separate persons one god so they all they yeah all like like they're all united like for example right. let's say you know, I get my son to work here and after a while, you know, he, he runs it for me pretty much. And someone says, Hey, I want to talk to Brad. And he says, if you're talking to me, you're talking to my dad, right? That makes sense. Why? Cause we're, we're of the same mind. He's going to tell me to decide. I already know him. Trust me. I'm the guy that makes all the decisions, right? But we're still two different people. As long as somebody understands that they're two different people, because if they were one, you would think they would have shared consciousness. You'd think they would have shared knowledge. They do. Well, then why would he ask himself, why are you doing this to me? Because wouldn't he already know and be sitting there smiling and enjoying it? Why? Because he already knows he's on his way to heaven, but he doesn't know why. Because it's not him. Sure. He knows who chose okay. who, who, who is Jesus? The only begotten son, son of who that son means, of himself. Do you know what begotten means? He's a son of himself no, no, no. risen again. Hold on. Let me stop you a second. Begotten means back unique. to life. No, it doesn't. Risen. I, I will guarantee you it means unique. One mm, and only we got some unique. to do. Good. I know for a fact what I'm saying is true. Okay. So let me if just. If I changed your mind, would you be happy or pissed? Oh, I'd be thankful. Okay, good. Listen, that's the, that's the I, right answer. I love correction. Okay? And so do I. See, that's okay. what makes us good. Right. See, if you if, if I looked it up and it says unique, mm-hmm. I'd be like, mm, that's interesting. Because I always thought it meant uh, back to life. Meaning, right. like he's the only begotten son. The begotten right. is, is what brought back. Right. Exactly. So, so see, let me fin- let me help you with that because even Jesus said, if you look, through I don't know how this went biblical, but but let's let's continue. Okay, so as Yeshua, okay, Jesus. Pardon me if I say Jesus because I'm so used to saying it, but you know what, G- Yeshua. Throughout, I do the same thing throughout the Scripture in the New Testament. He said many times that he is going to die and raise. He said, I will raise myself up in the last day. He didn't Where say, does he say God, that? the father throughout. I, I don't have my Bible with me, but um, I'd love to see that. Cause again, I I, I've never said, I I've never, you, I've never heard of that. My I, whole I, life. 
I promise you, I'll give you every scripture you need. Okay. I have my Bible with me. I'll shoot you the scriptures, but it's throughout the scripture. You have your Bible with you? Oh yeah. So you're a very faith-based individual. Oh, absolutely. When you leave here, you're like, you know, going to put together ministries and what, what, like, is it your main thing? I think serving God is my main thing without a doubt. And everything I do is an offshoot of that. That deserves a bomb. Ooh. (laughs) That means listen up only because listen, whether you believe in, you know, whether you're a Muslim, sometimes people say, dude, what are you? And I say sometimes a Christianism. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. Now, why is that? Because I've read uh, the Bible mm-hmm. and I've really studied the Quran mm-hmm. and there's truth in both books. I'll bet you anything. Oh, there's, of course. There's truth in all of them. Even Absolutely. Judaism. And sure. All Hinduism. There's a lot. Of, you know sure. why? Because ultimately it's true. There is a higher being. And then it gets splintered to the various religions that are now in existence. And when we all die and come to find out, they were all technically correct. That's a problem. And though. then someone's going to say, well, then why were they contradictory? No, but see, here's a problem you have with that. You already, if you read the New Testament, you know, as well as I do, Jesus said, I am the truth, the life and the way and the only Parts way to heaven. Of no, no, no. Shreds of truth. No, no, no. He said, Jesus said, and this yeah, is Yeah, but quotable. that's just one truth. He no. also said a lot of other he things. He said, I am the truth. But he also said a lot of other things. Like, But see, well, I'm just answering your one point. I know, but my point is, is there's shreds of truth in all of them. I totally agree. But I'm just saying, there's you, you can't get to heaven through Muslim or Hindu or that's Buddha. What, that's what the Bible says. No, even Buddha. Okay, let's look at what no, Buddha said. No, Muslims don't believe that. Let's No, no. But Muslims neither, don't did, even, neither did the Jewish religion. Muslims don't even believe that, that uh, Jesus died on the cross. They believe that he had a switched switch body. If you read the Quran, they don't believe that he literally died. They'll believe that he was a great man, that he did the miracles and all these things, but they'll say he really they, didn't die on the cross. I would rather, so, I would love to get a teacher of the Quran yeah. to sit with you because that is incorrect. They do believe he is a very, very, very important person. Yes, 100%. The, 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 he just, they just do not believe he's the son of God. Correct. Correct. Right. Which again, may cross that out. He's incorrect because God, because our God, Jesus, because someone came to me right now and said, Brad, you better pick one. Yeah. Look, I'm going with Jesus. Why? But I'm not calling him Jesus. I'm calling him Yahshua or Yeshua. I'm calling him by his name. Why? Because they've asked me to in the scripture, the scripture. I love that. So the Bible changed it. You look at the Bible. I love that. You look at the Bible. It doesn't have his name in there. The scripture has his name over and over again. It said his name. Yeah. So why aren't we saying his name now? Because someone along the way decided they're going to change it. Well, who, who had that kind of power? Right. And as far as I'm concerned, nobody. Right. Okay. So I'm not listening to a king. I'm not li- King James version. This is the king's version. Right. Version of what, bitch? You don't get to create your own version. What happened? What's the story? I agree. Well, this is my version. I agree. And by the way, if you don't listen to my version. That's right. Off with your head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now guess who's listening to his version? Oh, yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Or, or, or their head gets cut off. And right. then 100 years later, what do those kids hear? Yep. Only. Yep. That version. That's and then a hundred years later, what are those kids here? That version That's right. only. That's right. Everyone else is dead and gone and yep. old and forgot. Yep. And now guess what? We're 2000 years later yep. and we're just, we're just regurgitating what we've been told and yep. what our parents have been told and what our parents have been told and bang, get a bang, get a bang. You can go back till the 1500s mm-hmm. and, and, and realize that there was a time in the 1500s where the letter J didn't even exist. The letter J. So how was his name? Jesus. Right. No, I, you know what? I, and I so appreciate that because I'm actually use what you just said to me about Yeshua. I think you, um, you, well, you asked me. why I was doing it. That's no, why. you because blessed I, me in a sense because, you know, because I get, I have a tendency to fall in that same habit. Yeah. But you know what pattern. I think, you know what I think, dude, honestly, no, of course I, do. it ain't me doing it. Right. God in you. Yeah, that's no, right. I appreciate, like I said, it, it, I appreciate it. that totally resonates with me. And I, I appreciate that because I bought a website called, right? I got, a, I bought a website that says, do you know his name.com? I love that. Cause if I'm ever called to preach, yes, I'm going to be prepared. Amen, digitally. Man. Are you preaching right now though? Well, You're again, right I'm, 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 I'm influencing <laughs> and, or, right. um, su- suggesting people seek. That's right. all I'm doing. Cause I tell people full disclosure. I don't know what the hell the truth is. You, you got to just decide what you want to believe because you don't know. Nobody knows for sure. Well, Nobody I don't, don't want to sure. say that because if you decide I want to stick my finger in a light socket and I'm going to light up, you're going to die. So it's very important what you believe. If you don't, you, if you believe, you believe listen, if miracles? you believe the wrong, if you believe a red light is a green light, you're going to die. So if you believe the wrong thing, if you believe the 
the wrong truth, whether it's Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism that believe in millions of God, Buddhism believes in Nirvana, which you can just, you're going to be assimilated in the universe and die, or you're going to believe in the one true God whose prophecy after prophecy after prophecy has foretold Jesus Christ, what he was going to do, how he was going to die, where he was, where he was born. Do you realize 700 years before he was born, it was in Micah in the Old Testament says Jesus, the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And his name shall be... What, what, which one? Are you talking about Isaiah 52? Old Testament. And his name shall be. They named, They told his name. Right. It was Yeshua. Oh, yes. Of course. 100%. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's going to take, me a, while to, it's gonna take me a while to get back on track because, I mean, get on track with what you're saying. And I totally agree with that. So this is like, you know, years of... We're, we're having Bible stuff. study. No, I love it, man. I love it. Bring it. This is great. All right. So, so and it, you know, any diehard bomb fans, bomb squad members, they've heard this before. Only because I've 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 questioned a few things before. And, and a lot of people get all butthurt because they think I'm questioning Jesus. Well... Right. I'm not right. I, I just say you got his name wrong. No, you know what? I think just like if somebody said to me, "Oh, you know Devin McBee? I <laughs> love Devin. I love Devin." Right. And I'm like, "Wait a minute! I thought his name was Darren." Right. Well, Whatever. we didn't like the R back in like <laughs> a thousand years ago, so my brother changed it to a V. <laughs> who cares? It's Devin, Darren, Devin, same thing. Who Who would say? Oh, okay. I, I go along with that. Right. Everybody would be like, "Wait a minute!" Right. His name's Darren. This whole right. time has been I've been saying his name wrong. Oh my Lord. Right. What do I do? Right. Ask for forgiveness. Okay. Right. From the truth, he'll forgive you. Right. Of if course. If you ask for it. Absolutely. Okay. So it's no big deal. Calm right. down. Right. right. Just right. admit your mistake and start calling him by his name and calling I upon agree. his name and giving credit to his name and singing praise to his name because now you know his name. Right. Boom. Now, see, I think I'm saving souls up in this That's bitch. it, brother. Preach it, baby. Preach and by the it. way, you might you might one day die, go to heaven, and walk up and be like, I'm here to see Jesus. And the guard says, <laughs> the guard says, about? who? Who are you talking Jesus. about? Jesus. And then, and then you look in. He's there. There. <laughs> there he is right there. And Jesus looks over. And, and, and well, I should say, Yeshua looks over. And he says, go away. Right. You do not know me. <laughs> True. Yes, I hear Wasn't you. that a scripture, too? Oh, yeah. I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew yeah, you. Yeah, in other words, go away. You don't even know my name, yes. dude. Yep. I told you to seek. I told you to look. I told you to freaking search, yep. and I shall be there, and you didn't even right. look. Someone told you my name was freaking some other name, and you just said, okay. Watch this. So, Watch now, this. Do, I, do said, I really believe no, that? If he's like out. that, I'd say he's a little bit of a snooty feller, because like at least they, they, were, they were in the right ballpark. Like, right. come on, you're going to whack them just because they don't know your name? I don't believe that. No. Just like just like if my little kid, you know, called me dad dad. My name's not dad dad, it's Brad. Right. But I am a dad dad. So like right. the, but that's a little kid. Now, if I think if you are in the right vicinity and you never were told anything other than Jesus, you're still going to be fine. Why? Because he knows who you're talking about. Of course. That's of course. okay. Everybody don't freak out. You're not going to hell cuz right. you've been saying Jesus. All I'm saying is that's not his name. But you're right. You know, it's just on the heels of what you're saying, Brad, it's so important is because in, in Matthew, I believe it was 7, uh, 7, 18, Jesus was talking to these very people who are saying, you know, these guys will say, well, didn't, didn't we call your name Lord? Didn't we do mighty miracles in your name? Didn't we do this? And Jesus said, go away from me. I never knew you, you evildoers. And the, it's exactly what you said. I never, he, I didn't know them because they were not following the correct Jesus, or they were just saying it because they liked the perks they got. I mean, think about all these, uh, I hate these phony televangelist guys, with the purple hair, they get up there and say, if you send me a thousand dollars of seed money, you're going to get a new house because God promised you. And that makes me want to throw up. You ever see like these, um, healing priests that yep. are around? Like yep. yeah, a lot of people think, think, think those are fake, but like I saw a video, man, where this lady's arm was like really jacked up. Like from birth, you can tell it was just a deformed chicken wing looking arm. Yeah. And freaking, they were praying over her and that thing freaking straightened out. Yeah. And I'm like, if that's not trick photography, I mean, maybe yeah. it's some sort of special effects, but holy moly. Yeah. If that's real. And, but guess what they were, they were praying over with yeah. in the name of Jesus yeah. in the name of Jesus. So it's like, Hey, right. maybe his name is Jesus, but he, but it wasn't, but you said he knows, right? Well, maybe that's it. Or think about it like this. Maybe who else is a very powerful, sinister deity? Angel. 
Are you talking about Lucifer? Sure. Now, if Lucifer wants you to believe that his name's Jesus because he knows the importance of knowing his name, mm -hmm. and so you start doing some sh some crazy shit, casting out demons in the name of Jesus, who's mm -hmm. in charge of those demons? The devil. So, what if the demons? What if the devil's telling them to leave? So you'll just reinforce your belief in the name, right? They challenged Jesus with that, and Jesus said, "If the Beelzebub is casting out Beelzebub, he would be destroying his own kingdom." So, really, it's quite it's quite possible, but. The devil illusion. has it says in the revelations, the devil will, uh, basically deceive by lying signs and the wonders. whole world, the whole world by lying signs and wonders, meaning he's going to be working miracles. That's what I'm miracles. About. See right? the whole world. Right. Now, are you right. part of that? No, we're not part of the whole world. No. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, so I thought you meant he, part of the world is going to be deceived. So yeah, we are you. going to be deceived. No, I won't. Well, that's because we're putting on our gospel armor. That's right. But. That's right. Most won't. That's right. Yeah. Most will yeah. be deceived. Absolutely. And that's really, really sad. But that's because what are they doing? They're not, they're not really, like you said it. So we we're talking earlier. People aren't really in, um, interested in searching for the truth of things. They're not, they just want comfort now. The fast, quick buck, that's going to make me happy. This is going to make me happy. They're reaching for whatever sounds good. Give me that Snickers bar instead of that turkey sandwich, which is a lot healthier for me. Well, that tastes better. Who cares if I eat a thousand of them and I get a heart attack? You know, people want that quick fix, that thing to make them happy now, but they're not thinking about the long term and what's real and looking into, like you said, the name of Yeshua as far as Jesus. They don't really want to do the deep dive into who Jesus really is, who he said he was, what he did, you know, the miracles that happened, the prophetic, you know, things that happened over and over and over to prove that he was in fact who what he made said you, he was. What made you get so interested in looking? Yeah, you know, it's, I think that's a great question. Um, I came to faith uh, in Christ when I was 13 years old, but um, I had some devastating things happen in my life. And uh, did you do it on your own, or were you influenced? No, I was on my pretty much on my own. I mean, um, it was something where I knew there was a deep, deep emptiness inside of me, and uh, I kept trying to fill my life with things. In other words, professional sports. I thought if I was a professional athlete, it was going to make it happen. I became one of the top players in, in the world at one point in time. Um, I thought, well, okay, if I uh, become a cop, that's going to make me happy. I won the World Police and Fire Olympics, gold medals and those when I was in the with sheriff's department. Never made me happy, and that wasn't fulfilling my life. And the other thing was I was always trying to win back my dad's affection because he left my mom when I was 13 years old, and, and her life fell apart, and our life fell apart so part of me was trying to win back my dad's you know approval and his love and so I realized even after I thought well last stitch I'm gonna become an actor and become a famous actor and then when I started to become famous I was still empty I still that void was still there and so I realized you know what it's it's been God all along man it's like all right God you take my life I'm gonna serve you with all yeah, I so have. that was that was after you got older that was yeah I was in my 20s for sure yeah, so you just heard about it at 13. You didn't decide at 13. No, I, I decided. I was, but then, why, I also, then why were you void the whole time? Well, because as a kid, you know, and then as a kid, you don't understand. Like, let's put it this way, okay? So when you go to church, um, they talk about, our Christian church, they talk about God being our Father in heaven, right? Well, I grew up in this great supposedly Christian home, right? And my dad kissed me goodnight every night. He said, I love you, son. I'm here for you, son. I'm, I'm there for you, and I'm there for your mom. And I remember... Um, their best friends getting ready to get a divorce, Mickey and Pete. And I said, well, dad, would you ever leave my mom? And he goes, no, son, I'd never leave your mom ever. And so, which six, is the right answer, which is the right answer. But what happened was six months, months later, he pulls me over the side of the road and says, I'm leaving your mom. So all of a sudden you, a lot of times, if you've got kids, a son's going to look at his dad, like he's father God. A lot of times will, kids will do that. So when they're talking about God in heaven, they'll look at their earthly father and say, oh, my dad's a great guy. So that makes sense which that made sense to me. Well, when God, my dad did that to me, I thought, well, God just lied to me. God, I can't trust God anymore. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know yeah, this so, guy. So that's why you felt the void because you weren't Absolutely. really following. Absolutely. How, at 20 some years old, because my question is, is like back when you were getting famous, did, was there ever any debauchery? You know, rails of cocaine off hookers backs like story after story you know hollywood parties all the good stuff yeah uh they, no sorry i i uh i was a total uh, i i was so getting so close to god then i just no yeah you didn't get to partake well, in any of the nonsense here's why brad because i realized where that was going to take me you know i realized if look i start looking I mean, at but if you knew you were going to end up in heaven wouldn't you wouldn't you rather have a different life you mean like a wildlife like or if, something? Yeah, like if you're going to go to heaven no matter what. No matter what? You knew you're headed up there no matter what. 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't won't. you wouldn't you want to go enjoy life a little bit? Right, taste so, some flavors. Is that really enjoyment, though? I don't know. Not for me. Okay, uh, so that's the thing that you just said it. Not for me. Oh, that wasn't you're enjoyable like me. for me. Yeah, uh, that, you know, that, I, that, that they ain't didn't my do ticket. it for me. You know, I had tons of women. I mean, more women than any rock star could ever ask for. I mean, uh, women. That's a lot. Women begging me to. They, I mean, I had a woman want to crawl across the street naked if I'd sleep with her. I mean, crazy stuff that happened, and and so I know what that's like. I did, it wasn't interesting to me. Because I knew if she'd do it for me, she'd do it for anybody. I wanted one girl that would be faithful to me that would love me forever and build a covenant with that person and make a family with that person because that meant true love for me. That's what mattered to me. Hmm. So, and, and I've seen guys, I've been with guys that sleep around and did good cocaine and where do they end up? Were they happy? No. No. Why do you think they did it? Because they're miserable. People that have to sleep around to prove themselves or do drugs to prove themselves are not happy people. So, so after you got injured, how long did it take you to come back off that injury? Uh, well... Probably, I would say a good six months, probably, because I sustained such a huge concussion uh, on the American Gladiators uh, that uh, my, the doctor basically said, if I let you go back on that show again and you get another concussion, it could kill you or you'll be in a wheelchair because your brain is swollen. And I had plastic surgery where they, they sutured me up inside and outside. And they said, if you get hit in the head again, um, it's going to split open the ugliest scar that we can't fix. So um, that healed in about six, eight weeks. But, uh, the concussion was the doc just said, you gotta be really careful for quite a while because you know what's happened. Look at the football players. These guys get four five, six concussions and then they're drooling on themselves by the time they're 50, 60 years old because their brains have been just hammered. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it was about I, six months, Brad. Dude, I can't believe you don't have a personal website. I know. You know what? I terrible. And then I'm a dinosaur, Brad. I know what I mean. I know, but it's time. It's time to like yes. freaking get digital. Yes. Okay. Bring Absolutely. it current. People, Absolutely. People need to know the story. Absolutely. You know, you can go out and help a lot of people, coach a lot of people. You already right. do, right? right. You right. have ministries, oh, yeah. right? Absolutely. And you're coaching people on what? Um, life skills a lot. I think we talked a little bit about that. I think um, I think one of the most important things. Of course, I'm a spiritual guy. I think that's a big component. But I never, never, never push my Christianity on people because like you, I respect every faith. You know, I respect what everybody believes. If somebody asks me that my personal testimony, I'm going to be the first one to share it. But I do believe spirituality is a big component component. What I do also believe is in balance. I think we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, a lot of people will, when they think of success, they think of success in terms of how much money can I make own my own business, right house, right wife, right car. I'm going to be happy. Okay, right parties, right people, whatever it is, I'm going to be happy. And so they're always searching externally for things to make them happy internally. Well, I used to think peace. that. And then when I got it all, I'm like, I knew it. Perfect example. I was okay? happier than a pig in shit. Perfect example. <laughs> See, I mean, so Brad, very, very few people, if ever, have has had what you had. Now, I didn't have the kind of money, but I've had fame that's greater than most person oh, on yeah. this earth has experienced. Okay, so same kind of thing, right? Um so when I, when I got there, was I happy? No, I, I didn't find myself any happier. I mean, look at people like, uh, I worked with Jim Carrey three different times, Tommy Lee Jones. These people are insanely famous, insanely wealthy, and they're miserable people. Miserable. Miserable people. That's because money doesn't necessarily answer all your problems, but it yeah. definitely makes shit easier. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. I tell people, if you're miserable with money, dude, you're going to be miserable broke, too. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's not yeah. the money that's making you miserable. So yeah. you might as well have some. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. So that's, <laughs> maybe that's a double bomb. Um, yeah, so I mean, and see, that's where I'm at right now. I think to, to answer your question, really the reason why I'm kind of so outdated is about in uh, 2003, I was married to the girl of my dreams. I was had two beautiful young children. My career was on fire. I was ministering, traveling around the world, ministry, doing movies in Thailand, all kind of stuff. And um I got a call one day from my father-in-law telling me my wife, my wife passed away. Mm. And uh, my girls were six and, and two at the time. And so I remember uh, having to f fly back from where I was and I had to identify my wife's body at uh, Martin Luther King Hospital. And it was just horrific. Here's this beautiful, she looked like she was sleeping. I mean, that's what it really looked like, you know? And, and uh, she, was, she was gone. She had a massive heart attack at uh, 37 years old mm. um, she went in for some elective surgery that she didn't even tell me about because um, she knew i wouldn't have gone against it she went and got liposuction done and got a blood clot that traveled from her thigh into her lung and she passed away from a heart attack um, so immediately 
I was faced with a dilemma is, do you want to be Mr. Superstar and keep on going and make your millions and this and that and leave a nanny to raise your kids? Because mom's gone. And if you do that, you know how the lifestyle is, whether your business, you know how busy you get doing what you got to do. You're probably what, 12, 13 hour days are normal for you or were normal for you. Um, same thing in acting. You're in 14 hours a day, sometimes 16 hours a day. So I realized basically it was like God stopped me and said, okay, do you want to be Mr actor superstar or do you want to be dad mr dad mr mom i said and i and i thought i meant i thought what's really really in at the scheme of things in the long game what's most important being mr mom and so i pretty much pulled back from the acting pulled back everything to raise my girls and um i lost a lot you know, I don't mind telling you, I went from having everything to having nothing, but I was happy. My girls were growing. They're both doing really super well right now. Um, and so that was the greatest investment of my life. So. Amen. <laughs> you, you, a lot more much. people should think like that. Yeah, thank you. But just, a lot of people would be like, dude, you're a fool. You could have yeah. done it both. Uh, I don't necessarily, because sometimes, yeah. you know, we sacrifice time right. to go make that money and, and, and accomplish things. I used to do the same thing. I say, I'll, you know, my kids are small. They, they don't even know I'm not here. That's right. I want to be there when they get older. Right. So I was, I did sacrifice a little bit when they were younger, but thank God, because right. now that they're adults and they actually need things, right. you know, or, or becoming adults, right. you know, some of them, cause I have kids from eight, I have right now an 18 month old and I have a 37 year old. Oh, that's awesome, man. So like I have a span. That's awesome. I had I, I, three chances to get it right. Oh, that's and I'm awesome, still man. working on it. Right. But well, I was, we're always going to work on it, aren't we? I mean, that's life. Yeah, that's, that, what, that's, that's, how you, that's how you do it. It's on discovery. You learn. I mean, to me. But most people, they'd take the money and say, you know, yep. later on, they'd be regretting it. You're yep. not going to regret that. Listen, there's no such thing as what? There's no such thing. You're never going to see a U-Haul being pulled by a hearse. You can't take it with you, baby. All right. When you go, you go. And how many people have you probably talked to personally that, that, have such regrets they may be super successful and go man i wish a, my marriage went to crap my kids went to crap but i'm successful that happens all the time it's a cliche i mean it's like we're saying outside and i'm bringing this up again look at all the books out there in the foyer in the green room that's all about success if you do this you build wealth you do that you'll be successful do that blah 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 and that's true on one level but again if you don't have the right balance in your life i don't believe you're ever gonna have true peace find true happiness and just have a completely joyful, fulfilled life. Or if, or if you're morally bankrupt. Thank you. Thank you. So like, like let's pretend your morals are over here, right? right? And your money's over here, right? So if you have a billion dollars and you're morally bankrupt, that's times zero. How much is that? That's right. So what's zero times a billion? Zero. Zero. That's right. But let me ask you a question. What if you're morally a billionaire, right? But you only have a dollar. What's, what's, what's a billion times one, a billion. Amen. That's yeah. right. You I said got it. that from my boy Way better than me. I got to give credit to my boy, Jesse Itzler. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Awesome. Jesse totally Itzler has, is yep. a cool. So I'm gone. Yep. And that's but, so but true. As soon as he said that, I'm like, dude, that makes killer sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I speak about. That's what I preach about. Cause it's true. So dude, if people want to hire you to speak, have, you know, have you come get on their podcast? A lot of people get my guests for their podcasts yeah, for some yeah, reason. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm like the, the like validator yes. for people, Amen. but you don't need validated, dude. You get called all the time. Where do people get a hold of you that are listening to right this? Right now, um, like you're saying, as I'm building my website, just Facebook, man, and get on me Facebook. I'll give my number out. Um, I have <laughs> you don't give your number out, dude. You? you might get lots of calls. No, that's, I want lots of calls. How about, well, I mean, your actual phone number? Yeah. Well, if, well again, if you want to, how do people get a hold of you? Okay. Um, then get hold of me at Facebook, Darren McBee, D E R O N. M C capital B is in boy E E. Um, you can friend me on Facebook. Um, and that's probably the, probably the easiest, quickest way. And then I'll get right back to you. Um, or just call me personally because listen, I, I I'm Bomb also, squad. I dare you to just blow up his phone. Please. when This episode drops, like literally make him wish he didn't give out his phone number. <laughs> please, please, please. What's the number? 818-612-4304. <laughs> I think you're underestimating. I think you're underestimating. There but hey, maybe I'm overestimating. Eight one eight six one two four three zero four. That's right. That's D right. Folks, bomb squad. Just hit him up. Send him a text. Tell him 
Thank you know, you. what a great decision he made by doing that Thank and you. show him how you support him. Or again, if you're in a situation where you're thinking, dude, I want to talk to this cat, go to Facebook or dial 818-612-4304. Dude, you're the first person I ever got there. Is that your real phone number? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, I'll tell you, you what. You might have to get it changed after this. I hope so. Lord willing. But let me, let me say one thing. One of the reasons why I do that is because I'm also a drug and alcohol counselor. And uh, I don't know if I told you this, but um, for the great time of my my Growing up in the industry, I've been injured so many times. I mean, I've broken my back. I've broken my neck. I've broken every rib, just everything. Was it worth it? Yeah, I love it. But I mean, I'm a mess. And so year after year after year, I would go in and get these orthopedic surgeons. They're going, well, well, try this Vicodin or try this Narco or Oxycontin. And I'd always say no. Up until my 40s, I never smoked a cigarette, drank a beer, never been drunk. I mean, nothing. So um, finally at 45, I broke my hip and it was so bad that I could not even step into the shower. So finally I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just try this Oxycontin. And I became addicted within six months so bad that it almost ruined my life. And so after a couple of years, I, I remember saying, all right, God, if you can pull me through this, I can't do it myself. I need to have two, I had to have two hip replacements um, on the same hip because after I got the first one, a month later, I got a systemic infection that almost killed me. So I was in the hospital for five months. But after that, um, I got off that drug and, and went to rehab and, and started learning about addiction and how bad it is and how if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I went and I got certified, my drug and alcohol counselor now, and um, I actually manage a sober living home. And I I give my number out because people out there are hurting, people out there are suffering, and they don't know who to talk to or who to turn to. And, and so a lot of times it's like, man, here I am. And so I've talked to people at three o'clock in the morning, my moms of kids that have lost their kids that were out in the streets. And, you know, last year, one quick story, a, a person called me up and said, listen, my daughter's out in the street. She's, she's losing it. She had a baby. She's walked away from the baby. And uh, within three months, by the grace of God, and me talking to her, she's completely clean and sober. She's got her family back and uh, life is awesome for her. <coughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And so- That's why you give out the phone number. That's exactly why I give out phone numbers. Well, I would think, you know, man, not my bomb squad. They're all motivated champions. Oh, of but course. in reality, dude, of course. we all deep down yep. need someone to call. Always. I mean, listen, it's, uh, depression gets everybody. Anxiety gets everybody. And, you know, some of the most successful people in the world, as we were talking about, are so stressed out. So maybe you need to talk about getting decompression from that stress. What do I need to do to get that balance and get some little peace in my life? Or, you know, what's happening? Why am I blowing it in my marriage or with my kids or whatever? They just don't know. You know, it's like information, all the stuff that you know and you teach. Um, there's so many people out there, a sea of people out there that just don't know and haven't been touched yet. Yeah. So maybe by the grace of God, I can touch some of the people that you're not reaching. You'll reach people that I can't reach. And that's what it's all about, bro. <laughs> Folks, listen, you heard it straight from Malibu on Dropping Bombs. Yeah, baby. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. If uh, one of these days we'll have you back, check I, up on you. See, that how, would be awesome. see how many people it called. Thank you. Till next time, folks, keep it real. It'd be good for me for everybody to get the vaccine, but I'm not necessarily for everybody going to get the vaccine either. You know what I mean? There's principle and there's money. And I love money, but I don't want to do it at the expense of my ethics and what I believe in. You, you believe in 60-year-olds don't deserve it? No, I believe that if they if they offer it to them, they should have to pay a tiered structure into it.